I hope you are still fine and uh, relaxing and at the same time working at home. Uh, we continue with integration. This is our third lesson. In the previous lessons, we were looking at integration in general. Today, we will go to two main concepts about integration. That is definite and indefinite integral. Now, uh, when you are integrating, that is getting the value of y. There's a symbol that we normally use for integration. And this is the prolonged s. So this is the symbol we use. So when you find such a symbol in mathematics, it means integrate. So if I write, or if I write that symbol, and I put 4 minus 6x, then I put this in brackets, dx, I mean integrate with respect to x. This dx means with respect to x. So if I put dt, and the constant here was t, I would mean integrate with respect to t. But let's use x for now. We will be using t and other variables later. Now, that integration gives me an equation of y. And y is equal to 4x minus 3x squared plus a constant c. This one is known as indefinite integration. There are so many values of y that I can get. And even if I get this constant, the way we did in the previous lesson, there are so many values of x I can get given any value of y. So a different value of x will give me a different value of y. That's why we call it indefinite. It is not specific. It is not giving me a specific answer like 10, 15, negative 4. It is giving me an equation. So this is what we call indefinite integral. And the moment you see this sign, it means integrate. So if I write to you that with respect to x, I mean integrate 3x plus 2 with respect to x. And what you get here will be an equation of y in terms of x. And that one is indefinite integration. You have gotten an equation. So anytime you integrate and you get an equation, that one is known as indefinite integration. When you come to definite integration, you can, you can integrate this one and finish. Just integrate, go ahead and finish that. See what you're going to get. When you come to definite integration, I would like us to think about definite integration in terms of area and a curve. This will give us a better idea. So if I have a curve, of y is equals to x squared plus 2, and I want to get the area between that curve, and x is equals to 1, the, the line x is equals to 1, and the line x is equals to 5, You are familiar with this kind of work in the previous uh, topic of area approximation using mid ordinate rule and using trapezium rule. So this is the area we are talking about. The area under the curve and between the line x is equals to 1 and x is equals to 5. So we are talking about that area, the one I have shaded. So for us to get this, 
we can apply integration and integration will give us the exact area. Remember, the other rules will give you approximated area, but integration will give you the exact area. Now, the way we do this, write the sign of integration. We integrate the curve itself, the equation of the curve itself. X squared plus two, we will integrate with respect to x. And we have limits. One of our limits is one, and the other one is five. So this one is known as the lower limit, and then the five is the upper limit. And we insert the limits in the sign for integration here. So we put one and five. So you are integrating within those limits, within the limit of 1 and 5. And we will work out this one. First of all, you integrate normally the way we were integrating. So integrate this and you will get x cubed over 3 plus integrate 2 and you get 2x. You can add a constant, no problem. Now that you have already integrated, these limits we will not write them in front of the brackets, but we will write them at the end of the brackets. Note the brackets I have used, the box brackets. They have a meaning. And the meaning is this. You are supposed to substitute the upper limit first. You substitute x is equal to 5 here. You will get an answer. Then, you substitute the lower limit, that is x is equals to 1, and then you get the difference. Let's start. Let's substitute x is equals to 5 here. So we will get 5 cubed over 3 plus 2 times 5. You can still add the c, although it is going to give you a 0 when we subtract. So we have substituted x is equal to 5 in this equation. We start by substituting the upper limit. Then we substitute the lower limit now. So substitute x is equal to 1 here. You get a that plus 2 plus c. So you get an answer here for x is equal to 5. Then you get an answer here for x is equal to 1. And then you subtract. When you do that, you will get an answer. I think you should get around 33 and that. Just try. This C is going to give you a zero. Because this will be C. And when you open these brackets, it will be minus C. So C minus C will give you a zero. So your answer will not be in terms of C. But it is going to be a definite answer. So that is definite integration. We have gotten a definite answer, a number, 33 under that. So in this case, the area between this curve and the line x is equals to 1 and x is equals to 5 is actually 33 under that square units. I would like you at your own time to get the same area using the trapezium rule. Go and use the trapezium rule. You can use uh, h is equals to 1 for the trapezium rule. And you will see the kind of an answer you will get. It is going to be slightly different from this one. And the one for trapezium rule is an approximation. It is not exact. But this one is exact. So that is how we use integration to get the area and account. And that is the kind of integration we are saying is definite. It is definite integration. I want to give you another example under definite integration. Find the exact area under the curve y 
y is equals to x cubed, the x axis and the lines x is equals to negative 2 and x is equals to 2. I would like you to pause the video a bit uh, as, as you watch it and try to follow this example and get an answer. Uh, for just, just, just substitute them directly and get an answer. And before you continue, you, 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 you should get that answer. Very well. I hope you got an answer and your answer was zero. Does it mean that there is no area under that curve? No. It only means that part of the area is below the x-axis and the other part is above the x-axis. And so, what you did was to get the area below the x-axis and the one above the x-axis. You added them and you got a zero. Now, I want us to do this. And before we do it, it is important that you sketch that curve. So again, I would like you to pause that video, go through the concept of curve sketching, the one we did under differentiation, and sketch this curve. I hope your sketch looks something like this. The curve has a, station, a stationary point at x is equal to zero. It is an increasing point of inflection. So this is y is equal to x cubed. We are getting the area under that curve and x is equal to negative two and x is equal to two. So this is the area we are getting. The point I want you to get here is when you're getting the area under a curve, it is important for you to sketch that curve. You may not be asked to sketch, but it is important for you to sketch. Why? So that you can be able to know if you have a part of that curve below the x-axis. Because if you do, the answer by integration will be negative. But that does not mean that the area is negative. It only means that the area is below the x-axis. So what we are going to do, we are going to integrate this curve from x is equal to negative 2 up to 0. Why 0? That is the point at which the curve touches the x-axis. So if our curve touched the x-axis at another point, for example, negative 1, we would integrate up to that point negative 1. If it touch the x-axis at one, we would integrate up to one. So we integrate from negative two up to zero because that is where the curve touches the x-axis before it moves on now to the positive part of the x-axis. So we are going to integrate from negative two to zero x cubed with respect to x. I would like you to carry out that and uh, tell me what you are going to get. After you have done that, I hope the answer you have gotten is a negative. Actually, you get negative 4. Negative 4. This negative you ignore because area cannot be negative. It means it's just below the x-axis. So the area below the x-axis here is 4. Then I would like you to integrate from 0 up to 2, this part which is above the x-axis. You are integrating the same curve, x cubed, with respect to x. It's a definite integration. Integrate and then you substitute these two. And the answer you will get is the area is 4. So this area is 4. Now you can see the reason why you had gotten a 0. You had gotten here negative 4 directly and you added to 4. So you got a 0. But now we will ignore this 4 and the area will be 4 plus 4. 
So the area becomes eight square units. This underscores the importance of sketching the curve before you get the area. Now, there we have a good link between uh, differentiation and integration when it comes to getting the area under a curve. I hope you have gotten that concept uh, clearly. I will give you more uh, assignment on that. And you can also practice more. Get more questions about uh, curves and get the area. You can also go to the curves that we had sketched earlier in differentiation. Try to give yourselves limits from here to here and see whether you can be able to get the exact area. You can also go to the work we had done in uh, area approximation. See whether you can be able to get the exact area under some of those curves that you had done. As you know, practice makes perfect. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice day.